A solid flight plan for a potentially ugly en route weather situation starts with developing options that you can easily turn to. That's part of pre-flight planning. Monitoring developing weather situations along the en route portion of your flight lets you know if and when to switch to option B or option C. Let's talk about limitations to in-flight weather information next on 57 Seconds to Safer Flying. 2015, a pilot was flying home from Branson, Missouri. Close to Cuba, Missouri, the aircraft hit storm-related turbulence strong enough to break up the Piper Cherokee 6. Investigation revealed the air traffic controller work in the flight warned of moderate to extreme precipitation ahead. However, the pilot indicated he had Nextrad and a storm scope lightning detection system on board. Historical weather showed no lightning activity in the area. Also, evidence of Nextrad was not found in the wreckage. This pilot should listen to the controller and divert it to an optional destination, assuming he had one to begin with. For some pilots, onboard weather images have become a substitute for proper planning. Also, reliance solely on electronics means you're relying on their power sources. Talking to a weather briefer is still possible over discrete frequencies and over the ever-diminishing number of VORs. Discussing the weather with another live human is reassuring, but the pilot has to be in range of the communications outlet. Plan these communications during pre-flight by jotting down the frequencies along your route, should you need them. In the final scene of Magnum Force, Clint Eastwood's character Dirty Harry Callahan says, A man's got to know his limitations. Well, as pilots, we all have to know plenty of limitations. So you can add to your list of limitations, limitations on in-flight weather information. For the FAA safety team, I'm Phil Dixon.